In this video, a detailed look at the Carbon Fiber Aviator Wallet and Ridge Wallet. The Carbon Fiber Aviator Slide Wallet is handcrafted at their factory in Germany and they sent me this one for free. I thought it would be cool to compare with the benchmark product, the popular Ridge Wallet, which I last reviewed a couple of years ago when I showed you the Titanium Ridge Wallet. Here, I purchased the Ridge Wallet in Carbon Fiber so, both Slim Wallets share similar materials, hold a stack of credit cards, each have a strap to hold cash bills, and both have a coin compartment. Let's see if they live up to their high ticket price tags. I keep these videos concise and factual for you, so if the video helps you in any way, please hit the like button or just watch the video to the end, which is what helps me out the most. Thanks. First up, let's take a look at the outer materials and dimensions, starting with the Carbon Aviator Slide Wallet. Its contour is sized to closely match a credit card to give that minimal wallet experience. I like the aesthetics, the real carbon fibre has a three-dimensional checkerboard effect. You can't see it good on a still image, so let me try and demonstrate that for you on video. It's a smooth matte surface with carefully rounded edges so it doesn't catch or tear on your pockets. If you want to save some money, you could check out the aircraft grade aluminium at around half the cost or you can use the URL and discount code I placed in the description below, which is active at the time of publishing the video. For disclosure, if you use the code or affiliate links in the video description, I may earn a small amount from that at no extra cost to you. That helps me make more videos. The Carbon Fiber Ridge Wallet is also a little bit different. I steered away from the usual boring carbon fiber weave. Instead, the finished plates have a forged composite which uses fibers mixed with resin that are pressed into shape as it cures, just a strong and lightweight. But here, the forged carbon gives this camo-like appearance. Pretty cool. No rounded edges, however, like we saw on the Aviator wallet. Next, let's look at function and practicality. Sticking with the Ridge wallet here, you can store 1 to 12 cards. Ridge wallets have two aluminium inner plates that act to block RFID signals so that your contactless credit cards are safe from attempted digital theft from card skimming devices. If you look close, you can see there's a tapered edge that allows you to insert your cards more easily. This part helps keep your cards seated tidily and the elastic track keeps firm pressure to hold your cards securely. Cards are pushed out through the cutout, placing the ones you use the most at the top or the bottom of the pile. Getting at the ones in the middle is tricky. I've heard some people pinch the bottom of the wallet to separate them a little, but I can't do that easily with the optional cavity tray inserted. That's where you might store your change. We'll take a look at that in a moment. With the maximum 12 cards inserted, the wallet gets wobbly if you happen to have the embossed writing all on the same side. You have to rotate a couple of cards so that it's better balanced. So how does the Aviator wallet compare? The Aviator slide can store 1 to 20 cards, it also has a tapered edge here to help the cards go in. Again, the easiest ones to get at would be on the top or bottom. You can easily thumb cards forward with just one hand. I can't do that by the way with the Ridge Wallet. Kinda awkward. Ah, you try. One of the features making the Aviator Wallet feel like a much more complete product is the pull strap. This gives you a second way to eject your cards and from here you can fan them out a little. That's not all. Remember I said the card capacity is up to 20 cards? That's because unique to the Aviator wallet is its inner adjustable elastic band and stainless steel bolt design which allows for adjustment. Using the included screwdriver, remove the stainless steel torque screws and remove the carbon fascia. Now you can access the acrylic glass inner frame and make adjustments for card capacity so that the elastic track always has optimum pressure on the cards. With each bolt in the centermost position, you can store one to seven cards. Move one bolt outwards for a card capacity of four to 12 cards. And move both bolts outwards for seven to 20 cards. You'll need to adjust the pull strap tension too if you're going to place more cards in the wallet. On the Aviator Wallet website, you see a drop down list of what looks like different capacity wallets. It's the same wallet, they're going the extra mile and will set it up to your preferred card capacity at the factory before it's shipped. So you may not need to take your wallet apart like this. I would guess the elastic strap will last longer on the Aviator because the adjustable tension means you're never overstretching it. Let's try 12 cards like we had in the Ridge earlier. It doesn't feel stressed this time. 
Also, the elastic track runs across the width of the wallet, not the length, so you don't get the wobbly problem the Ridge Wallet presented. If we add another 8 cards, now we have the full 20 card maximum capacity. One downside is if you want your Aviator wallet to be RFID blocking, you have to configure your wallet selecting an extra cost aluminium insert instead of the lightweight acrylic frame that comes as standard. Next, let's look at the cash straps on the reverse of the wallets. Here, both feature a cash strap plate. They help distribute even pressure on the cash. And you can see the Ridge Wallet has even got these grippy little feet on the reverse, which is great detail. But I find it almost impossible to grab onto them to pull up a little to slide my cash underneath. You can configure your Aviator Wallet without the metal plate or remove it if you don't like it. It's easier to remove them with the carbon face plates removed. I'll show you on the Ridge Wallet, then you can learn how to replace the elastic track too. The Ridge Wallet also comes with a screwdriver and comes with four spare screws. I noticed some pre-applied retaining compound that stops them coming loose accidentally. There's no spares with the Aviator product that I have, which is not good considering the price. In fact, that's nicked points to Aviator. Better check there's none under here now I've beaten them up about it. Nine. So with the carbon plates removed, we see the two aluminium RFID blocking plates and you're able to remove the elastic track now if you ever needed to replace it. Notice this outer loop. The cash strap would not be present if you ordered your Ridge Wallet instead with an optional money clip. It's easy to remove the pesky metal cash strap plate. You can see it's designed with a gap at each end, which enables the strap to be pushed through. The same applies for the Aviator Wallet. I've reassembled my Ridge Wallet with the buckle removed. I think it looks better, it's flatter, and now I can push cash under here much more freely. Okay, the coin compartments. Oh, and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Thanks. Turn the Aviator Wallet over, grip here and slide. This is your one piece aluminium coin holder with inclusive anti-rattle insert. Nice. Now you can fit around seven coins. The fuzzy stuff is only on one side, so coins can still rattle against this part. You'll definitely love the coin compartment for its geek factor. Maybe it's good for a spare key. I've been using mine to stash some handy antiseptic wipes. On the reverse, it has a channel cutout so that it locates and slides perfectly. It's designed so that you can't put it in backwards and you can't push it out the opposite side. It's engineered as an integral part of the wallet design and doesn't interfere with the card eject function. In contrast, the Ridge Wallet's aluminium cavity tray is not inclusive but an extra cost option. There's no anti-rattle protection and it doesn't feel like part of the wallet. It simply slides in where your credit cards go. When you push your cards out for selection, the cavity tray comes out too, so you'll have to be careful not to drop the contents of the tray. Tricky. Wherever you put it, it's not great. I can't remember which way up it is if I put it in the middle of the stack, so facing upwards at the top or bottom of the card stack worked better for me. So how slim are they? With one card inserted in each wallet, they're about the same, but the Aviator is rocking its integrated coin holder. The ridge isn't here. If we insert the cavity tray, the ridge gets quite a bit thicker. So here's the key factors that stood out for me that separate these two wallets. First is card capacity. The ridge wallet is advertised as holding 1 to 12 cards, but I found it not great with 12, and I had to take the tray out to fit the 12 cards, otherwise I felt the elastic track stretched a little too much. That said, I don't think anyone wanting a minimalist wallet really wants to carry 12 cards. The Aviator is designed for 1 to 20 cards and without overstretching its elastic due to its adjustable design. How easy were they to use? I found it much easier to access cards and coins from the Aviator wallet. And the Aviator's coin holder is an integrated part of the wallet design. Whereas the Ridge Wallet's cavity tray to me feels like an afterthought and further hinders my card access. If you choose a Ridge Wallet, I think you'll like it better without the cavity tray, so you can appreciate its fantastic minimalist design. RFID blocking is standard on the Ridge Wallet and optional at extra cost on the Aviator. Each are manufactured immaculately and present a very high-end product. Which did you like best?